Well, greetings, folks, and thanks for being with us this morning, or this, wow, this evening. Um, that's mm -hmm, good, great start there. Um, my name is Matt Kwiatkowski, and I serve as an associate director in the Office of Living Learning Programs, and I will let my colleague who's with me introduce himself. Hi, I'm so glad you all could join us um, to learn more about Living Learning Programs. My name is Jamie Pembin, and I serve as director for Living Learning Programs. And so we have a short um, presentation that we wanted to um, go through this evening, going through um, each of the various living learning programs that we do have in our um, portfolio, also talking about some of the benefits of LLPs, but then leaving plenty of time for questions. Some folks may also join as this presentation is going on, um, so don't let that distract you. Um, and we are also recording so that we can use this later to post on our web page. So first of all, we just always want to be really clear about what is a living learning program. And here at Virginia Tech, you can live, um, you know, with students based around a common interest or common academic discipline. We believe that helps shrink the on campus community um, here at Tech and helps you to kind of customize what your VT experience is gonna look like. So in this process, you do not have to be a first year student um, to live, to return to the community. Um, with most of our communities, you can join as a rising sophomore, junior, or senior. And we'll talk a little bit more that, about that when we get to some of the nuts and bolts. So some of the benefits um, really quickly of being in a living learning community, I always wanna highlight these. First is community, as you might expect, is being able to be a part of a, a small cohort of students and a small network to build friends quicker, and then to also carry those into many years beyond just the first year of college, right? Particularly for those of you who are um, rising sophomores, rising juniors and seniors, um, the opportunity to be a mentor, to be a mentor to first year students, to support their transition to college, um, to help them to have a kind of a seamless transition and to give back, you know, in the spirit of UPROSUM is really important to the life of our living learning programs and what we hope, is, hope and aspire to with them. Many of our LLPs have specific uh, customized spaces. So this picture is actually the fairly new demonstration kitchen in Payne Hall, which is part of the, the Meraki um, Living Learning Community, which focuses on well-being and wellness. And so they, they do um, uh, cooking demonstrations here to, for like healthy eating habits and a variety of different um, uh, opportunities as well. Um, and then students also get to use that space in um, off hours as well. The fourth pillar here is faculty interaction. So all of our programs have dedicated program directors. In our residential colleges, we actually have faculty members that live in the residence halls and kind of, kind of lead out on that. So there's closer access to faculty for that kind of advising and mentoring relationship. Um, which can also then turn into other opportunities if you explore those opportunities with them. You know, there might be undergraduate research opportunities um, or even potentially, you know, future references as you're thinking about post-graduation opportunities and what is next for you after your time at Virginia Tech. And then the last piece that we'll hit on before we start getting into some of our specific program offerings that we have coming up for next year is just the academic success component. So on average, students in LLPs do have higher GPAs. Some communities do have specific um, uh, tailored advising around common majors, which again, you could potentially offer to first year students as a returner. Um, but also all of our communities do offer some sort of programmatic opportunities whether, you know, for academic success, whether it might be on time management or um, just other opportunities that could be supportive for you as students and being students. All right, so now we're gonna kind of roll into just a brief overview of each program that we have in our portfolio. So what I will say to you, we're probably only gonna spend like 
one minute or so on each program. So as we're going through, I would encourage you to, you know, take a picture with your phone so you can get some of the information uh, that are that's on these slides and you can look at, um, you know, you can go to the websites later and look at specific, more specific information. There are a few programs Galileo, Hypatia, Orion, and Transfer Experience that are not represented in this presentation because these are the four communities that only accept students that are currently in the program. So we're not gonna be talking about those tonight, but we will be talking about all of our other programs. Um, and then if you have a specific question or concern about your specific eligibility, you can reach out to us at livinglearning at bt.edu, or you can contact the specific program leader or program director for whichever program you're, you're interested in. All right, um, so we will start with Aurora. Do you mind if I toss it to you, Jamie, for the first one? Sure. Um, so Aurora is a new community that just started this year. Um, and so um, we will actually be recruiting, we're recruiting both returning students and then we'll have four first year students in it next year housed in New Hall West. Um, and this is really, it's an interfaith community. And so we, it's really, we want folks from all different backgrounds to be able to come together and explore meaning and search for purpose um, as part of this community. Um, and it'll be housed in New Hall West. Yep. The second one, as you might've seen, a brand new building over on the, um, let me make sure I get my directions right east side of campus is the creativity and innovation district residence hall and so um, there are a number of spaces for students who you know you have some good options here with cid you can choose to be one of the three llc's that we will actually go through in this presentation um, rhizome studio 72 and innovate which all have different specific themes or you can kind of choose to be a part of the general kind of CID experience, which allows you to be to have access to those collaborative spaces and also to the programming that's that's put on by our faculty principal, Dr. Tim Baird. Um, so there are some um, benefits to also being just kind of a part of the general CID experience. Um, Gen 1 or Generation 1 um, is a program for first generation college students. So these are students who um, their parents um, do not have a four year bachelor degree. Um, and so this is located in Pritchard Hall. Um, and we have both its first year as well as returning students. Um, but there's the programming focus, focuses on the needs of first gen students. Next, we have our honors communities. So there are two honors communities that we have. First is Hillcrest, which is located over in Hillcrest Hall, smaller scale of a community around 100 students. Um, for uh, returning students, for both Hillcrest and the Honors Residential Commons, um, you know, it, we, they preference honor students, but may also be open to other students. So even if you are not a member of the Honors College, but you're interested, I would still encourage you to apply. And if you have a good application, and there are spaces left, um, you could still get a spot. Um, the HRC, the Honors Residential Commons is located at East Amber Johnston, a little bit uh, bigger in scale, or a little over 300 students in that building, um, but they do have um, a live-in faculty, that's uh, Dr. Natalie Cook, who lives and kind of leads the space and with her family, and they all live in the fourth floor apartment um, and, and host um, their weekly principal's tea and engage in a variety of different topics um, just across the board from many different academic colleges. Um, and for students who return, typically for first year students, the HRC has a two year contract, but for a returning student, it's only a one year contract. So just wanna make that clear that it's only a one year contract if you enter as um, a sophomore, a junior or a senior. So Innovate um, is an entrepreneurial living learning community. Um, Matt, you might have remembered this name. Matt mentioned it earlier. So Innovate is one of three programs that are housed in the CID um, over on the east side of campus uh, near Donaldson Brown across the street from Vauder. 
Um, and so um, this program focuses on entrepreneurism. And so um, they bring in different folks from, um, from entrepreneurs who they might be alumni, um, they could just be local or within this area. Um, to talk about um, sort of their own ventures that they've experienced, um, as well as um, different uh, weekly events that they do um, to engage into the local entrepreneurial community. Uh, next is a new community that we have coming online for the next academic year, and that is called Impact. Impact is specifically a, a, a interdisciplinary uh, in the sense of it doesn't matter what major you're in, but the focus is data analytics and how we can use data to solve some of the most important challenges of our, of our time. So they are going to be located in Pritchard um, on the sixth floor. And again, this is a brand new community. So one of the exciting things uh, to be a part of something that's new and launching. And even as a rising student, you would have some um, ability to partner with the program leaders to shape, for, shape what this could look like for future students. Um, and so also new for this coming year of 2022-23 um, is Lavender House. Um, and so um, this is for LGBTQ plus students as well as allies. Um, who are wanting to learn more um, about the lived experience of LGBTQ+, um, as well as other areas of identities. Um, and so this community actually is going to be housed in O'Shaughnessy, and we're going to talk about um, the Living Learning Program, the residential college that is in O'Shaughnessy, but they will be um, on the seventh floor of O'Shaughnessy, which is recently renovated. Um, it is air-conditioned. Um, which not many <laughs> buildings are here. Um, and so um, we're really excited about this. Um, so yeah, I see the question that just came up. Um, the, basically what we did is looked at seventh floor um, and those are the, the total number of spaces that we have on the seventh floor. Um, there's opportunity, we may be able to expand that, but we're gonna have, we would have to, um, we're guaranteed the 25 to 50 spaces. Yeah, and so for every program that we launch, we usually start at a um, what is kind of a reasonable um, limit. So if we hit 25, we'll easily be able to bump up to 50. And if we hit 50, then we might be able to expand a little bit more. Um, and we'll just kind of see what the what the um, what the demand looks like. Sorry, I couldn't think of demand. Um, so moving on. Sorry about that. Okay. As Jamie just mentioned, um, the Lavender House will be housed in O'Shaughnessy, which is also home of the Leadership and Social Change Residential College. So that is um, in all different levels of O'Shaughnessy, not one specific floor, but the focus is really on the intersections of both um, leadership and leadership theory and living out leadership and practice, but then also social change and how leadership can influence, um, as, as this says here, local, national, and global societal issues. Um, so if you want to be a part of a, more of a leadership-shaped community, there is a live-in faculty principal here, um, Dr. C.L. Bohannon, and, um, and again, only a one-year contract. Similar to the HRC, um, Dr. Brahannon has weekly events that he invites students um, into his, uh, the apartment where he and his partner and his dog live. Um, but, and it's uh, both of both the residential colleges, and we'll talk about another one in a minute, um, have that type of recurring programming that's happening every week that the faculty member is organizing. Um, so Meraki um, is our well-being living learning community. Um, this community is housed in Payne Hall, um, so the first two floors of Payne. Um, and so this takes a holistic view of wellness, so it's not a matter of, okay, this is where all the fit kids go to live, um, but this is taking a holistic um, vantage point of that. So are you doing well academically? Um, are you doing well spiritually? Are you doing well physically? Um, and so as Matt said earlier, um, 
within Payne Hall, there is a newly renovated, um, um, I forget the language of it, not a yes. demonstration kitchen. Demonstration, I wanted to say display kitchen, <laughs> uh, demonstration kitchen. Um, and so um, they also have a large lounge that was redone um, a few years ago. Um, they've done anything from painting workshops to yoga um, in there. So it is really, it, it looks to you whole being as a student and how you can be your best self. Next is Mosaico. Mosaico is located over in Harper Hall and really is for people who are looking to live with folks from a variety of different backgrounds, including international backgrounds, to in increase the um, intercultural dialogue that we can have with one another and also to work on language practice. So the other benefit here is that if you are looking to improve in a particular language, there are many different language houses, everything from Spanish to Italian to Japanese to French um, to Russian that you can be a part of. And part of the weekly rhythm of those communities is being able to, to practice that language with the other folks that live in your suite. Um, Harper Hall is also one of our suite style buildings. So that is um, a feature of, of living in Harper. Um, so I've, I've talked a little bit about the residential colleges. Um, so the residential college at West Ambler Johnson is on the other side of where the HRC is or the Honors Residential Commons um, in Ambler Johnson. Um, and so this community is also led by a live-in faculty principal, um, Dr. Donna Agmon, who is a historian here. Um, she also offers weekly events in her apartment, um, as well as um, there uh, literally um, are 15 to 20 different activities that are occurring weekly in here. Um, the majority of those organized by the student leaders in that building. Um, and so students are assigned to what we call a house. And so basically we just create a smaller community within the residential college. Um, those all have um, returning students um, that are leading different programs. Um, and so it's a great way for you to get connected with them. Rhizome is another community that's located in the Creativity and Innovation District, specifically on the second floor. And it provides a space where students can kind of become globally aware of the impact that they can have on specific, specific societal issues. So this year, they are really thinking a lot about food insecurity and how to impact that. It's a project-based approach. Um, so there is a course that is connected with it through the College of Architecture and Urban Studies, but you don't have to be in that college to be in uh, Rhizome. It's open to students of any college. Um, and so uh, it's also about how uh, you can use your pathways and use your individual interests to affect those global challenges. Um, Studio 72 is the last community that um, is part of the Creativity and Innovation District. Um, and so um, it is a for, for folks who find um, outlet through arts and creativity. Um, and so um, and it's, it's an interest, so you don't necessarily have to be talented in art, um, but more that you have an interest in that environment. And so they do workshops um, where they'll learn different um, areas of art. Um, there's a showcase that is offered. Um, they've done open mic nights. Um, uh, and then Studio 72, Rhizome, and Innovate all have their own special lounge that is in um, CID that is reserved just for members of the community. And so Studio 72, um, they've got a ton of different art supplies, including painting, easels, um, there's music equipment um, in there, um, but it would just be if you're um, based on um, interest in arts and creativity. And it's also good to mention too that the other two communities, Rhizome and um, Innovate also have specific lounges if we didn't mention that. So all three of them do. And many of our living learning programs also have um, specific lounges uh, and spaces. Thrive is an interdisciplinary kind of experience for students who are interested in personal growth and development. So it's in the third floor of Pritchard Hall it leans into kind of, if you're familiar with the Clifton Strengths Assessment, um, the, your top five strengths, it really leans into that and help you to understand your strengths better and how you can use them and leverage them in your time at Virginia Tech. 
Um, it's, it, it's really helpful to learn those, particularly when you're thinking about um, other opportunities down the road, like internships. And um, so this program helps you to build some language around that, do some resume um, workshops, have some, a lot of social fun with students in that program, um, and kind of have that development. Um, Ujima um, is located in Pedro Yates Hall, um, sort of toward the center part of the residential side of campus. Um, and Ujima is focused on understanding, learning, and supporting the African American, the lived African American experience, particularly as it relates to higher education. Um, and so um, those students, um, right now it's, right, it's on floors one, two, and three of that building. Um, it's similar to a lot of the other residence halls that living learning programs are located in. Um, it is um, a suite styled and air conditioned. Um, there's a grid that um, we have on our website that will talk a little bit about giving an overview of all programs. Um, some of our programs do have an associated course with that. Um, Ujima is one of those. They also have um, weekly events similar to some of the other programs um, where they'll have you know, 80 plus students coming out to an event um, to get to know others that are in the community. And then lastly on our list this evening is VIA. So VIA is specifically designed for students who are either in university studies or any of the undeclared majors in any of the um, academic colleges. So if you find yourself in that boat or you wanna help support students, you maybe you were in one of those majors and then you transferred to a different one, that's fine too. Um, but maybe you wanna support first year students who are in that boat. Um, that is also in, in Pritchard Hall um, and uh, welcoming of students to be mentors and to serve in that capacity for the first year students. Okay, so how to apply, really important stuff here. Um, the, the one website, if you take anything away from tonight that you'll need to know is llp.vt.edu slash apply. And on that page, one of the very first um, text boxes at the top talks about current students and that you all would fall into that boat. So there is a link there um, where you that will take you directly to the Star Res housing portal. And that is where you would apply. Um, you, you're going to go to the LLP returners tab at the upper right, and you can apply for up to two programs. You can apply right now. Applications are due though by November 12th. So a couple more weeks, but November 12th is our deadline. And then we um, will commit to sending out offer notifications no later than November 19th. It is possible that depending upon when you apply, you may get a response earlier. So um, program directors, for example, are gonna be reviewing um, applications this Friday. So if you decide tonight that you're going to apply for one or two programs, you may get a response as early as Friday. So it just depends on when you apply. Um, and very important here is that should you get an offer from a living learning program, you first need to accept that offer. And then you need to actually complete your housing contract. And again, doing that all in Star Res for the 2022-23 academic year. So it's a two-step process. So that's really important to make sure you complete both of those steps by December 10th. So generally, we like to make sure that you have at least Thanksgiving break to go home and talk it over with your parents if that's something that you would like to do. But then we do um, want those offers and housing contracts completed by December 10th. So that kind of wraps up all of our um, formal pieces for this evening, but would love to stop sharing to see if there are any questions. I'll start off by answering um, a couple of things here that we can see in the chat. So, oh. Now, I just wanna reiterate that all the programs we've talked about, none of them require a specific major. Um, these are all either based on population um, or an interest area you have. Um, if you are already in a two-year LLP, you can't apply. 
Um, so what I would say about that is that because it's a two-year housing contract, you do have to stay in the contract. But if you are interested in, you know, let's just say, for example, you're in the residential college at West AJ and you're interested uh, to maybe switch to a different LLP, um, we do allow that. So that is something, if you are in that boat, please just email us at livinglearning at bt.edu and we can kind of look into your situation and see what we might be able to work out. So we don't, um, that's not a common practice, but it is something that we can accommodate. Um, can you receive multiple LLP offers? Yes, you can. So if you apply to two LLPs, for example, because you can't apply for more than two, but if you apply to two, you could get two offers. And then in that circumstance, you will have to choose one of them. Okay. Um, Soon Chen, I would recommend if you can email us at livinglearning at vt.edu. Um, if you can include your student ID in that, um, we can investigate um, with housing as far as what they have your contract status as and be able to provide you that guidance. Other questions, if you um, want to, you can, great, thank you. Um, uh, you can either write those in the chat or you can feel free to unmute yourself if you're comfortable doing that. Hi, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. It's very helpful that you just slow it down. Um, I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, my first one was, if you were in the general CID program, do you also have access to the like event um, and possibly lounges of the other LLPs that are in CID? Um, great question. So no, um, the the lounges that are um, program specific, so Innovate, Rhizome, and Studio Seventy Two. Only students of those programs have access to those spaces. However. Um, there are some other more collaborative spaces in the building, primarily on the first floor, that I believe they're kind of still working out what the um, after hours use of those spaces will look like, and those would be available um, to general CID students. And would events be accessible to like, general CID as well? Yeah, yeah, those the spaces on the first floor, those would be accessible to general CID, yes. Um, I was wondering for like honors housing, um, what do students usually get out of those housing options? Sorry, what is students, what are the differences um, between the housing options? For honors housing? what the students usually get out of those LLPs? Sure, um, so um, Hillcrest and Honors, are, I'm sorry, Hillcrest and the Honors Residential Commons are, um, they're both Honors Housing, um, but it's a different experience in both. So Hillcrest is a much smaller community um, and it has its own um, different um, programs. They do, They I think they just this past weekend did their annual haunted house that um, they've been doing for years. Um, there is a faculty member that is um, that does programs um, in the in that residence hall. Um, she she offices there. She doesn't live there, um, but she offers programming there um, as well as the RAs do programming. I would say that maybe the frequency of the programming may not be as um, as often as within the HRC, um, the Honors Residential Commons. Um, that program, um, it's led by Dr. Natalie Cook, who is a faculty member, and so she does weekly, she has several weekly traditions, um, and then there's a bunch of student programming that is done. That's 320 students, um, you know, and I think, honestly, I think most students say that it doesn't necessarily feel that large, um, because they get to know the students on their floor really well, and then they attend different college events. Um, what, what I think is great about a number of our living learning programs is that you can opt into a pro, you can attend an event um, and um, and decide that you don't want to attend it next week, but then attend it the following week. Um, 
But a lot of these things, like, so for instance, every Friday at um, 3 p.m. is the principal's tea. You don't ever have to check your calendar. It's happening, except for right before break. Um, both, um, I can't recall, Matt, if Hillcrest is air conditioned. Um, the Hillcrest is not air conditioned. Um, it is suite style bathroom. Um, the HRC has both um, some, some suite styled um, bathrooms as well as um, larger common bathrooms, but air conditioned. Um, and then lots of different common space that's available for student gatherings. Any other questions? Was that helpful, Thomas? Yeah, thank you. Um, I had a few other questions. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that so non honor students can apply into honors housing, they just won't have preference. Um, I was wondering if you have any data or information on, on the possibility of going in as a non honor student. Yeah, it really just depends upon two things. So I would say, um, you know, if you're not an honors student, but you want to be in those communities, just having a good rationale when you write your short answer um, question of why you want to be in the community. I think that's really important. But then I would also say, you know, it's also just space dependent. So we are going to be, the way our processes work is we, um, offer contracts to returning students first. And so we fill up those spaces first. And then what is left, we will then fill in with um, first year students. So if basically what our communities are looking at is they don't, they, there's a cap of how many um, returning students will let in because we want to reserve room for first year students. So as long as there is still room and you have a good application, um, there is a good chance that you could get in. It's definitely not a guarantee, but um, those would be my recommendations. Often, I think students who apply for Hillcrest or um, the HRC that are not currently in the Honors College, um, it's, they're, they're intellectually curious, um, and they know that the, some of the programming that's going to be offered um, is, um, is sometimes programming that's just focused toward honor students, um, that you might not have access to because you're, you're not part of the Honors College, but if you were in those communities that you would have those opportunities to engage with other faculty um, and other programs that are happening at the university. And my other question is, if you don't get into either LLP that you apply to, um, which seems like a little bit of a scary uh, scenario, what would be your option? Um, one thing that I will say is that we are um, we are sort of track as we if we see students are not offered a space in a community and that's formally that decision was made, um, we will try to reach out to that student to encourage them to look at another program. Um, but Matt, you probably are able to speak a little bit more to like the what if there. Yeah, so if you are, what I would say is if you get a no offer from a program, I would ask the program for some feedback about your application. I would also then feel free to email us at livinglearning at bt.edu and we can take a look at your application and see maybe from our perspective too, what were some of the strengths and weaknesses. And then um, we can also reopen the application for you so that you can apply to other programs should that happen or should that occur. Um, but if you do put a good faith effort into your application, there's probably a good chance you'll get in. It, it's just also dependent upon, again, the program and how, how, how in demand they are. Um, because as you saw from our presentation, um, our, our programs are all varying in size. Some are very large and some are, are much smaller. So those programs that are larger are more difficult to enter? Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Any other questions from anyone else tonight? Awesome. Oh, Thomas, you got one. Yeah, you got another one. Sorry, I'm just. Uh, no, um, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. If you mentioned that, like, if I email uh, CLP email, I, I might be able to get feedback on like strengths and weaknesses of the application. Um, is it possible to have that feedback before I send in the application to, to kind of see if I'm my application is solid? Sure. If that's something that you're really interested in, we can definitely help you with that. Um, here's another recommendation and tip that I will also say um, in, in general that I think is helpful when navigating Star Res. Two things I would do. One is I would make sure you're using the um, internet browser, Google Chrome. That usually just has the best interface with Star Res. And then also I would put your questions, type out your the answers to your questions in a Word document and just make sure you save that Word document. Um, if there are any technical issues or anything that you then have those and can provide them on the back end, because we can always, um, uh, on, the, on the back end of things, we can always just copy and paste your answers if, if that's an easier um, process as well. So there are some ways that we can help support that. Hey, the best advice I can offer to anyone applying is that um, the application is what they're making the decision based on. Um, so you want to make sure that you articulate um, why you want to be in the program, you know, the, the questions are asking, you know, trying to get a sense for you and what you might contribute and what you think that you might uh, learn from the experience. Um, and so I think being able to articulate that desire you have to be part of that community is really helpful for the program director to know when they're when they're making those decisions. Um, are there any? Uh, is it possible to set up some kind of like one-on-one -on -one, uh, advising session or, or or time that you can talk to like somebody from housing or living learning program, um, just like ask for questions, get to work out the situation. Yeah, no, absolutely. I am more than happy to do that um, with you, Thomas. If you, I'm usually the primary checker of the email. So if you email the Living Learning account, um, I'll be able to get that and we can set up a time to walk through what the, what the options might be best for you, for sure. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and um, transition out this evening. But thank you so much for your time and attention and your good questions. And like I said, again, if you do have anything that comes up, um, I probably have said this 10 times tonight, but livinglearning at vt.edu, we would be more than happy to help you navigate anything that comes up. So thank you and have a good evening. You all take care.